I was like, oh, cool. These guys seem really dedicated to their to their story. They're really creative, and they you know they have a whole team, and they they do a lot of stuff. And I I, I respect this. I I like it a lot. But then I went and I found their other Patreon, and it was for the like porn version. The, like, canonical porn stories that happen with the same characters in the same thing. And I was like, oh, oh, dear. I don't know, I don't, I guess I just don't respect it as much. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Procrastinators Podcast. I'm your host, not best guy ever, Tom oh! Oliver. Wow. Whoa. Man. Already an improvement. Whoa. <laughs> and we're here today to talk about some shit that we don't like, but we fucking hate. But today, we also have with us Monkey Jones. Oh, oh. Hey, everybody. It's me, the deep-voiced, uh, uh, leather-soothing sounds of Monkey Jones. I'm scared. The Davu. I got my standing mat ready. Ben Saint. <laughs> I'm here to take a shit on all the pieces of garbage on the internet today. Oh. I can't wait. And the responsible one keeping us all on track, hopefully the hypocrite. No, that's not me at all. That's that you got that wrong. That's the wrong description. Okay. What do you want to be then? Uh when you gay. grow up. Uh, okay. Well, <laughs> me you're, you're, too. you're on the right boy. track. And now mm. you're probably thinking, but PCP, didn't you already do this topic before? <laughs> Good they would have remembered that. Viewers. <laughs> Astutely I'm glad you, observed. I'm glad you're paying attention. But it's... Well, the answer is, welcome to Creators We Hate, Part 2! Oh! Because today, the day of recording this today is uh, International Podcast Day. This is a thing that apparently exists. Uh, Twitter told me so, so and Twitter doesn't lie. So what better things to do on International Podcast Day than to revisit a topic we've already beaten to the ground and... <laughs> Just ex accept our, our nature as human beings to just thrive on hatred and things that make us angry. So that's what we're doing today. More things that we hate. But before we start, another announcement that coincides with International Podcast Day is that we finally did it. And by we, I mean me, because no one else did it but me. I spent five grueling hours getting the PCP up and updated completely on iTunes and Google Play. Oh, oh yes. shit. Yeah. For all fucking of you fucking... Dumb. Peasants who out. use an Android phone so everyone who's, instead of an iPhone. So everyone who has been uh, requesting that we put it on iTunes, uh, go. You can now go and there it it's is. There. Is it, we, is it there it. right now? It's there right now. Every single episode correctly formatted with description. It took way too long, but I did it. I bit the bullet for the team. And, as, and as there some, it is. As someone who's never used iTunes and legitimately doesn't know, I'm, I want to ask this question for the sake of people who are maybe retarded like me. How do you find the PCP on iTunes? Well, it's a huge pain in the ass. Basically, what you have to do is first you have to install iTunes, which is like basically kneecapping your computer for life, unless you're cool. a dirty Mac user. But if you can get past that first step, uh, if you install iTunes, definitely uncheck the automatic updates. Otherwise, it'll never leave you alone. Uh, okay, <laughs> but you just go to the podcast section and you there's a search field you search for the procrastinators and it should pop right up I've tried it multiple times. It has worked. It's the same thing on Google Play Music if you're on Android uh, You just go to the podcast section you search for procrastinators and it pops right up along with some other shitty podcasts that we're gonna kill someday and uh, Yeah, that that's that's how it works. It's pretty simple unless you're retarded which I mean some I of you out there I'm sorry <laughs> You're just gonna have to consider, figure it consider out. Consider the audience. Consider <laughs> the audience we're talking to. I Sigh, gotta say, I never wink, wink, <laughs> nudge, nudge. <laughs> I, I never thought I'd see the day. I never thought I'd see this happen. Well, uh, but here we are. It's, hey, it's, we're, folks, we're living I in the pulled future. Pulled up the Urban Dictionary definition of hatred. Uh, so let's take a look at that. <laughs> All right. Uh, Urban Dictionary defines hatred as the trademark sign of love between two cynics, often accompanied by sarcasm and clever insults. What the fuck? So true. That sounds like me <laughs> and Ben in, in a yeah. nutshell. Yeah. Uh, geez, maybe I've learned something about myself today. <laughs> sounds like a homestuck to me. I don't know about that. Yeah. Hussy wrote that. Um, um, well, hey, who, who has somebody first. who they really fucking hate? Yeah, let's, let's just get the ball rolling. I have someone. Hippo, go. I, I have off. someone. It's me. It's me. All right. Uh, so my uh, creator that I hate is um he's a pretty big one he created the universe it's god it's <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Oh, we're, we're starting strong where today. Do we, where do we go from here? <laughs> Did young Sheldon just walk see? into the room? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's it's probably not what you think, but uh, because um, I see I see God as like the JonTron of deities. You know, he started <laughs> off alright. You know, he, he created the universe and he had some pretty good content in like the, you know the, the early you know, the early, early days. Really funny on Game were, back, right? that back, Really funny back, on Game Back Bronx. when he was back when he was indie. <laughs> yeah, back when he was indie, he was you know just doing all that stuff. But then he sort of fucked off after the Bible, and he, he's he's never been he's he really done nothing. He really, he's, he's, there's there's been no miracles. There's been no new stories. He really he's just sort a, of fallen really, off the face of the earth, he, and now he works at Bed Bath and Beyond. He, you know, he, he pulled a it's spoony just, one. I was about to say story. the same thing. He promised this big like second coming of his son and fucking yeah. up everything, and yeah. he just collected all the followers and their money. He just, and hasn't done shit with it. What a yeah, dick. we've all been Doesn't we've all been funding anything. him this whole time, but God he's just damn. he's just not he's not and he's not even transparent about it. And somehow he's gaining yeah. more followers despite not doing shit. Not a single update on Twitter or anything. Man, oh do you know how many views the Bible has? It's uh, unbelievable. Insane. <laughs> the ad revenue must is, Holy is the, shit. Here's the here's the real question though. The Bible does Google let it be monetized? There's rape, there's murder, there's there's tons of things in there that really shouldn't be advertiser friendly, but seems yeah. like he gets a free pass for his like history of like, you know, creating everything. What yeah, a Yeah, it's nepotism. Yeah, I don't it's, can't say I'm a fan of that just that just makes me hate him more, you know? It's nepotism and it's the appeal to authority. The ah, divine authority. God. <laughs> With who who so, can even yeah, say that was that, that that was um yeah that's it that's all I got I couldn't think of anything. <laughs> you wanted to do this episode and you're like I got this great got this great yucker for the beginning baby they're gonna be chucking and yucking all night if it was just gonna duck out for the rest of it, he's done his part collecting <laughs> yeah. his check he's good to go <laughs> <laughs> um, well I've got a a YouTube creator that I think all- yeah let's bring it back down to the realm of mortal men who we can actually uh really sink our teeth into figuratively Here's and a- literally. It's a recent event that I think should piss all of us off equally. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, maybe not the Davus and the Bents, but I think the rest of us will have a bone to pick. Now, it's no secret that I hate Grade A under A. Um, mm-hmm. But typically, it's just in the past it was because I didn't respect his content and I thought it was unfunny and lazy. But boy howdy, he made a new update video and he said one of the dumbest things I think I've ever heard, and it made me go from distaste to actual pure hatred. His excuse for not making videos for months was that he was depressed, and at one point in the video he says, it is literally impossible to be funny when you're depressed. And he said that as if it was a statement of fact. And that just got my blood boiling so much. Instantly you think of Robin Williams, Jim Carrey, uh, Tom Oliver. Hypocrite, <laughs> digi bro. All these funny guys who are cripplingly depressed. So I, how can he, how can he put that statement out there and not expect massive ridicule and hatred? You know, I guess That's when you just have weird all excuse. that ad revenue, you can, you just don't have to dig deep and actually try to be creative under pressure. You just, you just coast for a while. You see, I don't yeah. think the problem was that he was depressed. I think the problem is just that he can't be funny in general, so he needed the excuse. It's literally impossible for, to be funny under any circumstances, let alone these ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doesn't matter how he's feeling. I, I, the, the first few, like the very first few grade A under A videos I stumbled upon before he was like a big drama guy. And I yeah. thought, hey, you know, that's, that's kind of funny. It's like sort of observational humor. But since he's like, he, he's just... I I've, I've stopped following his, uh, following him since, and he's like he's just stopped being funny. He stopped being creative or interesting. I wonder whether those are initial videos were just copied from something, I... like like skits or skits uh, sketches that he's seen. I've heard he's a big douchebag. Yeah, it doesn't uh, surprise me. I don't me really at all. know much about him. I mean, I don't know. It's it's. I didn't watch a lot of Grade A under A, but it felt like a formula that wasn't gonna last. And I guess that was correct, because here we go, and he's yeah, well, really. Well, it was it was when artificially I, when I bring this extended up, by jumping on the drama train. He's kept it. He's kept the lifeblood pumping uh, with that with that development. Delicious. Yeah, and and the reason why I bring this up is not because you know, like we don't need to dissect his content because we can all agree, like yeah, okay, maybe it was better back in the day, but it went to shit. But just like this one specific thing about depression is what really put him on my radar of hatred. 
Uh, and that's that's all I wanted yeah, to I've say never, about it. I hadn't heard that, that he said that. I may I think you maybe tweeted it or something. Yeah, I was did. just like, because I was thinking about that when you tweeted it, and I was like, hmm, cat is like there, there's probably something to that. In like there's a certain type of humor that you can't do when you're depressed. I didn't look into it at all. I don't think he did either. But it's not impossible. It's just like when you're depressed, everything's more difficult. So well, I think most of like all the comedians that I have as my favorites and all the ones I respect are very open about being depressed. You have like uh, I mean Greg Giraldo back in the day before he fucking died from overdose. Uh, Louis C.K., George Carlin, like all these guys were pretty fucking depressed, and I think it fueled their humor and made them funnier. Because it gives you, a, uh, I think, a more unique and more comedic outlook on life when you wish you were dead. Yeah, it's weird. It's it's like he... I, I think it's like the impossible part. Like, it was impossible for him to make content because he was sad. Doesn't work. You can't just say that and have it be okay. You're, you're just... It's just a pity party he's trying to throw. Yeah. And he, he's trying to write off all comedians as, oh, I bet they're all, you know, mentally fine just because I personally could not make content because I was too lazy and depressed. That's, that's all I got to say about Great A Underrated. Let's move on if somebody right. else has one. So, you know, uh, beginning this podcast, I'm like, oh, geez, I mean, the only one I really have to think of immediately is I Hate Everything. But we all talk about him a lot. Really, my main problem with IHE is uh, he has obnoxious editing, but in a way that I feel like no one else would agree with me. So I don't know how to make that whole rant coherent. But I was just scrolling around YouTube trending to look for other people, and I was reminded of someone. So immediately... uh. <laughs> Anyone who does parody songs, song parodies, but where, like, the the parody is that it's, like, a review of the song that they're parodying. So I believe the most prominent example is um, the, uh, the Key of Awesome, where, like, they do song parodies, but, like, it's not, like, its own idea. It's not, like, a Weird Al parody where, like, they take the lyrics and turn it into, like, a different song with a different meaning, with a different point. It's, like, it's, like, it's, like, a song about the song that it's a parody of. And it always makes, like, some snarky points. So they... I don't think I've ever seen something like that, but I can try to they're imagine. Is it like they're, they're just replacing words and saying it in, like, a slightly snarky, sarcastic way? Fucking obnoxious is what they are. <laughs> because it's like... It's like... God, they have one that's a parody of Bad Romance, right? And it's just they're like, oh, blah, doing... But, like, they change the melody. It's supposed to be Bad Romance, but I guess for copyright reasons, they change the song. I'm like... Well, what's the fucking point? I guess it's supposed to be a stylistic parody of Lady Gaga, but it's obviously trying to be bad romance. And this was, you know, several years ago when that song was new. But then, like, it's not just Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga is in the song. It's a woman pretending to be Lady Gaga. Again, it's a parody, but it's the same fucking what thing. The fuck? I know. But then there's what also a, biz- a, guy. What a bizarre right. fucking. I know. really asinine. Talking I know. About it. I know. I know. It, it, but like, then there's also. I believe it, the the key of awesome is mostly two people, a guy and a girl. So there's also Lord Gaga, right? What the fuck is the point of that? So she's like, I'm Lady Gaga, and this guy comes in, like, I'm Lord Gaga. I'm like, okay, how is that a fucking parody of of Lady Gaga? The only way I could imagine it would be is if there was a twist that they're both the same person because Lady Gaga has a dick because that's a joke from 2009, right? I don't fucking know. It, it's not mm-hmm. played up that way. And, like, also, it's filmed... Yeah, in, like, is the joke supposed to be that they're saying I'm Lady Gaga? Something like that, but then, like, no, they play... They, they, it's they like, sing more hey, guys, like, uh, look, isn't <clears throat> Lady Gaga so much like this? Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. I, th- no, the... I think it's not even that. I think the, the joke is that <clears throat> uh, her name is Lady Gaga and the male equivalent of a lady is the a lord. lord. Yeah, not terribly it. insightful. And, like, also, the music video... <laughs> The music video is, like, filmed in, like, some random fuck-off hallway that's, like, all white, because obviously they want it to look like Bad Romance, the music video, where it's all white, but, like, they obviously didn't have the budget to make a studio look all white, so it's some hallway in, like, some factory or something that they were able to find and get permission to film in, so it's really fucking awkward, because it's all filmed in a goddamn hallway just to get it to look white, and that was constantly distracting on top of the entire, entire fucking premise of it just being weird, and they have lyrics like, uh, doing weird stuff, you know, I believe there's literally lyric, making up this shit as we go along like oh wow you're totally parodying you're just telling us what lady gaga's style is okay i gotcha and like they have like another parody of like one of the one direction songs and like as it goes on it's like about how certain people react to the song and then uh then it also talks about how the one direction song is similar to the backstreet boys's famous song and so they're like oh yeah you didn't think we'd notice that did you but like this is woven into the lyrics of the parody it's so fucking confusing the, the key of awesome has a parody of um of et by Katy perry and it's like the whole premise of the song is about the fact 
that Katy Perry is trying to make a song, but then Kanye West is in the song, and so like Katy Perry is singing to the melody of E.T. <laughs> Con, yay, oh why are you here? This is my fucking song. Don't intrude on it. Something like that, right? And like oh by the God. end, they, they 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 talk about how like Katy Perry just made the song for the check or something or something fucking like that. I'm just like, what's the goddamn point of these things? I hate them. You know, I hate I hate it when there's like a parody, but like there's not like a strong premise to it. It just makes it, me cringe. It, it, it's what I call it's, hashtag conceptual cringe. You know, it sounds like it, like gen <clears throat> they're putting in like generic. Oh, celebrities just do things for the money. Like that's the joke. Yeah. It's not got anything to do with Katy Perry. They're it's, just yeah, doing yeah. Katy you could, Perry. Man, you could have made that mailman is Perry delivering the mail popular. just for the money. What a fucking hack. <laughs> what a TV shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I find them to be like the yeah. worst, the worst parody people. Like, you know, at least fucking Rucka Rucka Ali's got like his own like personality and funny jokes that I like and he yeah, talks Rucka's about 9 11. Yeah. But like. <laughs> Yeah, worst fucking parody people. It's really the um, it's just the natural byproduct of any medium or industry getting saturated with fucking cash. People just jump in with no ideas but plenty of fucking budget and props. You know what I mean? There's just I remember one time seeing like, um, it was fucking uh, what's the one what's the one Republic song about shooting stars and no more counting money and shit? What's that one fucking stars? That fucking one Republic song. I you don't would not know. believe your eyes. Yeah, something like that. Right, yeah, of course, yeah, fucking, obviously, yeah, sure. definitely, you got it, monkey. But, like, okay, it's that song, it's that song, like, the lyrics are all the same, but it's performed by Disney villains. But, like, some of the lyrics have changed. So it's like, it's like, it's like a live-action interpretation of, of some of the Disney villains in a music video, and they're singing it. And even King Scar is in there. Just a guy dressed like a fucking this, King Scar. And I'm like, okay. It sounds like a cornucopia of terrible ideas. Yeah, and like, I'm like, and it's coalescing super... Coalescing into cringe Yeah, central. and it's like super produced. Probably a few thousand dollars at least. Probably like a studio that, uh, you know, is actively producing shit. But they're like, disgusting. okay, what are we going to make this Absolutely time? Absolutely gross. Yeah, just, there's just like, there's no strong like premise there. So, yeah, I hate those people. And, of course, they get, like, millions of views and are super successful and you wanted to shoot them. Oh, the God, because... one last thing. I remember, like, <laughs> fucking, there's, like, I remember my girlfriend playing this, this like, com combination, a medley of fucking Maroon 5. Just a Maroon 5 medley made by some generic YouTubers with, like, a full music video and everything. You know, it, like, is mostly centered around that fucking whistle jingle from Moves Like Jagger. And I was just disgusted by the thought that people care that much about Maroon 5. <laughs> <laughs> this reminds me of I think his name is Brock Baker. Does that sound familiar to anybody? Not I. So he he does a similar thing, but like he'll he'll sing a popular song but in the voice of like a hundred different characters and he's a really talented voice actor. And I think it's like the right version of what you're describing because it's just like him standing in front of the microphone and then each lyric is a different performant like a different character so it's impressive and it's not like overly produced or like it's not trying to be a parody. So I think that's if you're gonna do something dumb like this, that would be the good way to do it. But what you're what you're describing sounds horrifying. Bad. <laughs> yeah. All right. I have somebody who just who's a brand new creator that's fucking horrible, and I hate it, and I'm oh disgusted boy. that it exists. Uh, Susan Wasiski. I don't know how to pronounce her last name. She is the CEO of YouTube. Oh, and, no. And she started a YouTube channel last week. Oh, no. Oh, my and, God. And, and it's probably the most disgusting thing ever because it's like the video is like titled something dumb like, how do I make videos on YouTube or something? It's like, I oh, asked God. a bunch of my friends. And so it's just like her saying, like, I'm going to start making videos. And then it's like, these are the people who are going to help me. And then it's all these like, it's like The Rock and like a bunch of other celebrities talking about like, oh yeah, we're YouTubers. Uh, we know how to make oh YouTube videos. God. And then there's like Instagram models and Viners all giving her advice. And it's super just like corporately produced and disgusting and the most horrific thing of all time. And it's just like, everybody hates you right now. And this is the time you decide to try and like, Reach have a out. public facing like I'm just gonna sit here and have fun guys it's like no get your shit back in the <laughs> office and fix all the things that suck balls right now what Tom, is Tom, wrong with you Tom I, this is an interesting scenario because yeah. you've seen it none of us have I think we should all try to guess what advice she got and you can confirm if, if we get it right because oh. I'm guessing I'm guessing somebody tells her just be yourself on camera and, and the audience will follow through absolutely that is one of the points fuck <laughs> it's, Any, it's, anybody else got a guess uh, get a, uh, get a good microphone, probably. 
Um, um, I don't think that was mentioned, but you know, huh. real advice you'd actually should use. So, not, so not much. Okay. There. Oh, I know, I know what they said. They said go to the the use the YouTube Creator Help tools in <laughs> YouTube, and 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 you know they're not shit. Use them. I don't remember that being there. But oh, oh, they pro- they probably said upload constantly. They probably said yep. upload as much as you possibly can. There was like can. four upload people who said, who said you gotta you gotta be consistent. Consistency is the most important thing. <laughs> Just vomit yeah. out that content every right. day. Yeah, and, and here's anything the thing, will do. This is the thing that I'm going to be really really interested to see is because I I have ad block, but like, is this video monetized? And if it is, oh, of course, fuck you, because like, there's only so many ads to to, to play on videos, and so the CEO is gonna take ad revenue. From the people whose Jesus. site she owns? Like, oh, Tafu just posted the like counter and it's 7,000 thumbs up, 33,000 thumbs down. As it should be. <laughs> I, that just tells me 7,000 people are either working for Google or need to be executed immediately. Or they're 12 years old. I have to, like, from now on in my in my life, when I see something stupid on YouTube, either like a high like or dislike bar or stupid comments, I, I just always assume it's a 12 year old because what else could it be i, I can't well, imagine a real half adult well, monkey, a... those 12 year olds are the ones who are watching your diary of a wimpy kid video and make yeah you famous. that's where that's where i'm seeing all these likes and comments <laughs> at dude fucking half the, the top voted comments on that video are is this video demonetized too it's i mean great. Oh. It's 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 funny once guys, I, but don't don't beat a dead horse. That would be that would be fucking hilarious if her video got caught as like not suitable for all <laughs> Oh man. But she would never admit I it. I hope I hope know. everyone flags the video and she yeah, gets I'm, a strike I'm, on Yeah, I wouldn't her be account. fucking surprised if shitloads of people like try to flag the video but obviously like they're just going to unflag you know, you know YouTube will, right. like automatically reject those. She has, she has those. CEO shields and just bounces off it's like <laughs> She's got mod powers. Yeah. She can no clip. Her channel just gets no up. no strikes at all. It's it's whatever. Yeah. So I hate her, uh, because it's just horrible and terrible and disgusting. And I can't believe I I'm gonna I'm gonna keep watching and see what other cringy shit that's oh, there shit. and just watch this site continue to fall apart. Uh, How many it's subs be great. does she have right now? I didn't even look. I hope zero. It's got to be at least forty. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> The board of directors is all following. <laughs> yep. Um. Well. Uh. I'll go. Am I last? Am I the last one? Um. Yeah. We 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 could probably go around another time. This is going to be a very short part. Yeah, I figured yeah. we'd keep going until we. We, we got a channel more hate than that. I mean, come on. Yeah. Well, I well I got a I got a general one. Uh, it's not about anyone specific. That's that's but fine. We can all jump in then. Go. What 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 I the. Just in general, the thing that makes me hate anyone is just if they're it's just if they're overappreciated. Even if I like what they do, then like if I see that they get more appreciation for it than I feel they deserve, I hate them. <laughs> so just yeah. any, anybody that violates your 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 personal sense uh, of you know sense such of... such 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 beloved content creators such as Digibro, best guy <laughs> ever. Um, you know, two ha- absolute hacks. Um, um. And I don't. I don't even think Digi would disagree. He's said before that he thinks it's weird that he makes more money than like animators that make anime. So I don't know. But 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 they're they're small. They're small fry. They're small fish in this pond. We're talking talk about someone like like Jim Sterling, who I like and like I like his content. But he makes like he makes like twelve like twelve thousand dollars a month on Patreon been, for. I like, think he's been stuck at like eleven thousand since forever. I think it's it's like ten thousand okay. something. I, I, see I know I know like that's that. a pretty decent place to be fucking stuck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I wish yeah, I was but, stuck there. I mean, that's how much I make in a year working full time. So I fuck, I see something like that. that. I see something like that, and like the goodwill that I have because I like the things he has to say just drains away and is left <laughs> with nothing but resentment in its place. Um, well, th- just so just yeah, take some solace, Ben, in the fact that he's gonna be dead in like six months. At the true. Is going good. Oh, is that true? <laughs> no, but I mean, well, it could be. I mean, have, yeah. He, at first, his I lifestyle was, is clearly not uh, not designed healthy. for longevity. Let's put it that way. He, he'll he'll be crushed under the weight of his himself. <laughs> is he a big fat? He's like he's like three hundred oh, yes, something. He's a, he's yeah, a, he's, he's a big boy. He's enormous, oh. and he's, yeah, he's he, a very 
You've never you've never seen the Jim Sterling video, the gym position. I, I only follow like five YouTube channels, so you know, everybody keeps saying, "Oh, monkey, why are you ripping off H three H?" Like I don't fucking watch that. I don't even know what it like. I know what it is, but I have never watched the video. So stop fucking saying I rip off the, the, all this shit. You you're definitely doing the right thing. There's just too much shit, and it takes yeah. away from time. Like I'm gonna go watch to Fargo season stuff. three. I'm not gonna watch fucking H three H three productions. You know. We could we could all learn something from this attitude, just so we have to but unfollow I was say, everybody. Oh, another another example that that girl on Patreon who does the art, Sa Sakimi, Sakimi Chan, Chan. Yeah. Sakimi Chan, like sh yeah, her art's real nice. Her art's real nice and everything. Is it worth like fucking fifty thousand dollars a month? Of course not. Fuck. Get fucked. Fuck right yeah. off. It's just like yeah. it's she. All she does is she does the same like like uh busts of of popular animation characters and then behind the patreon is them without a shirt on or with tits hanging out and Ooh. you have to pay for that and that's how you get fifty thousand dollars a and month i think i think she offers like you know you get to see the process and you, you see like the sketches and like you see, maybe you can see like videos of her drawing them and stuff so it's like mm -hmm. it's kind of like disguise it's kind of like sort of educational like ooh, learn how she does it but like it's also like a cam on. girl where the tits you're seeing are not hers installed on her body but drawn by her hand which is just as hot <laughs> oh there was that there was that girl there was that girl who who i don't know what her name was but she was like some not particularly well-known artist but she like she got in some financial or tr trouble or something, and the Game Grumps, like, tweeted her around and, like, fucking, like, help this girl. And they did, and now she's got, like, a whole bunch of money on Patreon, and she and she kind of, like, started doing, like, some fucking, quote, like, erotic photography on the side. She's, like, this chubby girl who, like, posts oh, no. raw pics and, uh, yeah, all the oh, time. So, no. yeah, yeah. So, that, so that's, that, that, you know, that, that, that's the monster. That's the kind of monster that's created by situations like this. When, when are we all going to milk Digibro to, to get that sweet spot? push that we all need to start making a million dollars um uh soon uh i'm i'm calling the police uh i'm i'm, 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 I'm waiting for i'm waiting for his next stream and i'm gonna swat him we're gonna swat him guys <laughs> You know, come to think oh, about God, it, in down. general, I often that. find myself being, uh, find myself with a lot of distaste for, like, people on the internet who, like, do art, but, like, disconnected drawings, there's not, like, something big and ambitious they're doing, like a big old webcomic oh, that's actually good and stuff, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, something that annoy related to that. People that, yeah, people that have, like, OCs, and they'll, they'll draw, like, they'll draw, like, fan art of their own OCs, and they'll call them OCs, and then, but there's no story to go with it. And it's like, yeah, why? Well, like, like, what's yeah, the well, point? Yeah, like, in general, people who, like, just do a lot of pictures, like, if I really like your art and, like, your attitude, then I can be a fan of you. You know, there's, there's, there's uh, PCP fans who do great art, and I love them. But I just feel like when they start becoming, like, personalities and, like, becoming famous and stuff, it's like... Are you really doing enough to justify that? Are you, like, weaving an incredible artistic experience that can change my life to justify you being someone yeah. who is revered? You know what I mean? I, I don't know. Like, yeah. uh, you know, going... Wait, can we switch topics to another person, or are you not done yet, Ben? Go, no, no. All right, cool. On. So talking about art people, right? I I was looking at the trending tab, and I see there's an Odd Ones Out video. Do you know? Do you guys know the Odd Ones Out? I'm not familiar. No. It's this no. style of video where it's basically just any other kind of YouTube video where, like, you just talk about a fucking thing, right? You just talk about a thing, any topic at all, but it's, like, drawn, right? So it's basically, like, desperate technique to justify my art major uh, technique number 375, right? It's like, well, I gotta make YouTube videos, but obviously animation isn't fucking gonna ever work on YouTube again. So instead, you just sort of have, like, a slideshow of, like, your art to, like, tell us, to, like, make a point, right? Or, like, have a rant. But instead of, like, Google images, it's like you fucking tablet all of your images, right? And instead of just having an OC that stands perfectly still that you cut to, oh. you actually kind of sort of animate the OC, right? So, like, the... I've, I've seen some of those right. things. They're, they're, they're so, like, banal and, like, uh, and then I, this is the first crush I oh. ever had on a girl. Yeah, exactly. And kind of this is me, and I look like a cute little cartoon yeah. character, yeah. and that's why you clicked it's on like, the videos. It's like a like, vlog, but instead of being a vlog, they just kind of yeah. loosely draw a bunch of stuff. And Here. It's like, this is what happened in my life. Yeah, I don't, 
I, it's, oh, but it's so relatable, guys. Yeah. It's so, so relatable. It's like that. I just Ugh. don't understand how it even achieves critical mass like that. Right. I guess, yeah, so I guess like something the, uh, tangentially related to that is like people like Owl Turds and like the, the, the four panel so relatable comics. Yeah. And how those just blow up everywhere. So like the odd ones out. It's really just because a lot of people who consume that stuff are like teenagers and they just want somebody to say, I know what you're feeling because you know parents don't do that i guess well, yeah. don't, it's, but it's, it's just it's young young there's, people there's who ways. haven't heard it before the thing that i've always found yeah. interesting about people who make content like that is like how can that feel satisfying you know because, right. because when you think about it the, the people who like that content they have no they don't care about you they don't care about your vision they like their content because they see themselves in it so so when they like your work they're just it's just an ego trip <laughs> like it's just like well, they just I see feel... themselves in the work and that's why they yeah. oh this this is me but like you, the artist and the content itself is completely substitutable with anything else they would find. Like you're not you're yeah. not building anything for yourself. The minute you stop doing that, no one's going to care anymore. And it just feels like well, such yeah, a fragile thing like, to build. I, I think like the people who make that sort of content aren't uh, clever enough to realize that that's true, and they will just see all this praise and think, oh, they love me, and they'll feel fine with that. Mm. That's well, none of that possible. was what I had in mind, but of course, <laughs> I guess it's all true. But okay, so the odd ones out specifically. I posted a screen. I posted an image of like the OC for that channel in the chat. It's like this big tubby white, and by white I mean like actual white guy with a big old mouth, mouth, red pants, and he presents okay. himself. You know, the characters all like I'm a cutesy, you know. You know, I, and I get it, you know, I've drawn OCs of myself, and I just draw it all, like, cutesy and simplistic, whatever. I get that kind of fucking ego thing, right? But, like, the guy who voices him, you know, the real guy, does not convince me that he's, like, a lovable, tubable guy, right? I heard about him during the fucking Cool Cat controversy, because it wasn't just I Hate Everything who got his videos fucked with. This guy also did a Cool Cat review. Now, like the I Hate Everything review of Cool Cat, I have not seen the I Hate, uh, the, uh, Odd Ones Out review of Cool Cat. I never bothered to see it. Them. But one thing that was really telling to me during the um, the Daddy Derek controversy is that, you know, he didn't delete every fucking video review of his channel. He didn't ever go after YMS directly, as far as I know. I mean, he did, like, cut ties with him eventually. But, like, he didn't want to take down YMS's review, but he did want to take down the other guys' reviews. Even though YMS's review was, was pretty cutting, but it was respectful. And based on what I could tell, it seemed like I Hate Everything and Odd Ones Out were not being very respectful to uh, Derek Savage or whatever this fucking... No, it's not Savage. I don't know what fucking everyone's names are. But, like, I watched... Odd Ones Out's review uh, videos talking about the controversy with uh, Derek that he had, and he showed a bunch of fucking emails that he he and Derek had exchanged with one another. But like, it felt like a weird sort of like leak. It felt like he shouldn't have been showing this on the internet. It felt like, like he a was, violation. It felt of like privacy. a violation of privacy, and also like the way he wrote some of the emails just seemed like he was being a dick to Derek. And I'm like. Yeah, like I know legally Who the, the laws and your... publish emails without permission. That's disgusting. Yeah, it was fucking yeah. weird. And I think he had like certain reasons or justifications, but it was fucking weird. He was not convincing me that regardless of his legal uh, justifications, did he have like the the etiquette justifications, right? And so I clicked on another one of his videos where he talked about his time working at Subway, right? Now, immediately, you know, every Subway employee I've ever met was a dick oh, to no, me. Oh, no, I know where this is going. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> um, he talked about, like, you know, it was a shitty job, and he had, like, shitty customers, and just talked about, like, various things. And, like, he thoroughly failed to convince me that, like, all these different little stories he was talking about and complaining about weren't just him being bad at working at Subway. Like, it's always interesting to me when, like, someone tells me their story about people who pissed them off or people who fucked them over, and yet even though I only heard it from their perspective, just by gathering the information, I disagree with their, their own conclusions that they weren't in the wrong. Like, he just made himself sound like a really shitty Subway employee, but he never, like, really indicated as much, <laughs> right? Just by based on the information he gave me, right? He did not he did not garner any sympathy from me, and yet it was all presented with this big old tubby, blobby, white Pillsbury Doughboy face, and I'm like, you're fucking disingenuous. You're just, you're, again, it really comes, to, it, I, obviously I'm probably wrong, but it comes off to me like, oh shit, I have an art major, got no. lots of bills to pay, can't make animation for a Dude, living. you're not wrong, because I've been to Subway several times, and I've never seen a good Subway employee. Of course, I and I know it's because, yeah, I know it's because it's a shitty job, but also, like, seriously, there's a fucking thing on the menu, right? It's a fully made sandwich with all these different ingredients all listed, all in the picture. I point to it saying, I want that, and they go, okay, what do you want on it, <laughs> right? 
and I don't know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when the message is gonna get up to fucking Subway Corporate's fat fucking skull. When we point at the image, just give us the fucking image, and we'll customize it if we choose. Why do we have to come up with how to make the sandwich every time, right? So, yeah, that's the cup, that's the, that's like the- Like, when I tell my mom to make the sandwich, she just fucking does it. I don't gotta exactly. go into the kitchen and point that, out every little thing I want on it. That is the corporate cuckoldry that the odd ones out participated in. <laughs> and so, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't sympathize with him, but he presents himself as sympathetic, you know, I, I fucking get it, but, yeah, annoying. Yeah, um, I have, I mean, it's really, I, I was thinking about, like, who do I hate? I don't really hate, like, many people. I hate, like, uh, practices that people do, and it's really always based around, like Ben was saying, uh, undeserved stuff. Like, if somebody <laughs> just sucks, and they're, and they're getting no views, then I'm like, well, I mean... All's right with the world. Expect? The market has spoken yeah. correctly. Mm -hmm. Wait, so, wait, but, wait, time um, out, Tom. So, are, are, do you mean to say that sometimes the market can speak incorrectly? Um, according to my own subjective interpretation, yes. That is yeah. a, but it's the invisible hand. It just, like, whatever the, the happens is the correct thing is for the market. My balls and I mean, me are you saying you've never like seen, it. have you never seen something, Monkey, that's been, like, real popular, and you're like, I can't believe people like this, I hate it, I wish it would go away? And I can see why I personally don't like it, but like I said earlier, all, every YouTuber is 12 years old, so I can see why it <laughs> is popular. Well, that's my whole just, thing. Like, why I wouldn't like, like it. Like, at the end of the day, people are going to like what they want to like, and I'm just saying, yeah. in my personal opinion... They're retarded, and so when when my personal <laughs> subjective opinion on what the way things should be and life itself syncs up, there's a there's a quaint little moment of zen where I'm like, yes, things are okay, okay here, guys. And then yeah, I you shouldn't say that the market is wrong. You should be like, well, I guess I disagree with the market. <sighs> I, I, I was talking about my perspective of what the market would be, not the market in yeah, Guys, I feel, I'm seeing a fucking semantic, semantic, outside my window. I gotta go check it out. Bye. I like it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Well, 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 it's like let me let me give another example. It's like. When someone when someone gets popular like by accident or like by random chance or just because they happen to be in the right place at the right time and thereafter they they continue to make content that is just like what anyone else makes but because they struck at, at the right time while the iron was hot their videos can succeed their art can succeed or whatever uh, whatever it is where other people's wouldn't even at the same level of quality yeah you know what I I have I have the guy I hate it, the guy who uh, changed or uh, created the YouTube algorithm. <laughs> I hate that guy. Whoever he is, he created that programmer. It's probably Nate. Fucking piece of <laughs> shit. <laughs> he made it so that he made it so that people can just succeed by you know random chance, and then they don't need to be good, and everything sucks, and uh, YouTube sucks. <laughs> And he I changes so you can only be popular if you make videos about gals or videos about diary of a wimpy kid. Yeah, that's pretty much and that, Spider Man. That, that, and that. Elsa. <laughs> yeah, fucking Spider Man Speak, and Elsa. Speaking too. of Nate, can I say that I hate Nate? He's one of the creators I hate oh. because, because I, I already I already called him out as one. But yeah, please go on. <laughs> Not, not do you, even. Do you think not, he's nothing, gonna listen to this episode? Of course, nothing to do, uh, nothing even to do with his content. His content's fine, but can I just say, the man, the man, <laughs> you the hate man, him. I have a bone to pick with the fact that a couple years ago when we went to a convention and I owed him money and I had to pay him back, he was like, "I, you, you're, you're short eighty cents, buddy." I had to pay pal him eighty cents. Oh my god! What a load of fucking shit! Oh my god! What That's stingiest a little bastard ever! And, and he's not here, so I can say it. Nate, that was fucking gay. <laughs> I was not cool with that at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little weird. It was it was That's it was bizarre. disgusting. Ah, but you know it's only twenty percent, uh, uh, twenty cents off of the. You know, it's just like almost a whole dollar. That's like a big That's money. A, that was like you know like two packs of gum. I could have enjoyed and I'll never have yeah, now. Two whole yeah, packs but now of gum. He That's gets two packs two. of gum. Yeah, that. But I don't like. I don't care well, about him. I care about me. And then PayPal probably <laughs> took out sixty cents out of the eighty cents that you sent him. Probably. I so, do but, see, but it was the gesture. Yeah, I do see you wanting to get back the money you're owed, but when it's such a little amount and it's one of your friends, that's when it sort of gets weird. And yeah. the thing was, is like this was like, like back in like I think it was like 2014. So we had only known each other for a little while. So I was just like, mm. oh, oh, huh. How can I make our relationship even stronger? <laughs> I know, I'll bitch about 80 cents. Mm. The, 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 the... Sounds like him. <laughs> back so yeah i just i had to get that off my chest it's been burning in my soul you can't for, say for, that on an episode when he's years. here no i couldn't but, <laughs> but he beat you up now dude. that yeah. he's not here i can take pot shots and not have to feel guilty about it until later oh so, hey guys yeah. i got some good news uh 
Digi Bro, you might have heard of this guy, Digi Bro. Oh, he told yeah. us in the chat that he is like 16 episodes behind on the PCP, so we can talk shit about him too, and he'll never know. Well, yeah, Who's but, gonna but, tell but, him? but the hammer won't come down for another <laughs> several weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, can, we can avoid punishment, his, his wrathful vengeance. Yeah, we're in the eye of the storm right now. We can do whatever we want. <laughs> you know what'll be funny, though, is we could tell the audience, like, go tweet this thing at Digi, and nobody explain what's going on, and then he's not going to have any idea where it's coming from. We could be, like, wh What should we make everybody tweet at Digi right now? Something stupid. Um, like pictures of like cantaloupe or some shit. Like everybody just tweet Digi a picture of a cantaloupe and then yeah, the hot, we'll see what the happens. The hot new meme. Oh yeah, that that's a good that, one. That's, yeah, that's something, something that defies something completely and nonsensical. And no one tell him why. Yeah. We're watching Nobody you guys. Nobody explain it. Yeah. I fucking mean it. If you if you if you fucking tell Digi what's going on, I'm gonna come to your house and I'm gonna you're, give you a warm you spanking. What I want so you're much blocked is on the on the PCP Twitter. No 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 second chance. You're done. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is serious. We're in yeah, charge. But, um, We're in charge of the ship now, what, and there's new what, rules in what town. What I want to see, what I want to see is Digi just coming into the chat one day and saying, "What the hell is up with all these cantaloupes?" <laughs> and for us to just type "LOL" in caps lock. That's what I want. <laughs> see, folks, if you let this happen, I will send the screenshot of us all laughing at Digi on the PCP Twitter page. <laughs> Looking forward to that. What a reward. Oh, uh, what a good meme. Oh, man, we're so funny on the PCP podcast. <laughs> Legendary. We like to have jokes. <laughs> we like to. We just don't do it very often. We like, we like yeah. you know, building that audience involvement, you know, <clears throat> building some rapport. Keep, keep your eye out for the, for the PCP cantaloupe t-shirt up for sale <laughs> eventually. <laughs> and in the corner of the t-shirt, Digi's like sitting there with a confused face like, huh? <laughs> What's a cantaloupe? Hey, guys, Hippo, is that the end of your uh, your your thing? Um, well, I, I was going to go a bit more uh, into, like... Go ahead, I got a good one, uh, but I, I'm going to wait for it. Okay. Uh, so I was, like, yeah, the people who undeservedly get views and stuff, it's it's always annoying when they're just, they're not very good and they don't try very hard and they get everything they could ever, ever possibly need. But, uh, what I, you know, what I hate specifically is, uh, I had, I had something in my head. I'm just trying to, just trying to, you know, trying to figure, think of it. Think of it as I say these words that, like, mean nothing, and I really shouldn't have, like, continued to say one, but I just should have, should have just, you know, do it. Uh, monkey, you go. I really okay. hate people who, like, don't think about what they're going to say before they say it, and then they just start speaking bullshit. I thought I could, fi I could, thought I could remember the it in worst. the time. God, Tom is ruthless tonight. No, He's tearing I'm, everybody I'm, to shreds. I'm, I'm drunk on power now that Nate's not here. <laughs> I'll I'll kill you guys. My knife here's the worst type of content creator on the internet. And it, again, like what Ben was saying, it's like a broad category. People who live stream video games with their girlfriends. Oh, oh God, oh. the absolute shame. Disgusting. What I've am I never watched to get out anything of this shit? like that, but just the description alone sounds mortifying. Yeah. Really, that's all I gotta say. Like, does anybody want to add to this? Like, Davu, Ben, um, Tom. Yeah, I I got. Just don't do <laughs> I, it. I got a thing. I, I mean, would I, I, never I associate hate, um, with such a practice. Is, the only yeah. reason a woman should be on a live stream is coming to bring you a sandwich. Other than that, <laughs> not from Subway though. Those yeah, fuckers. fuck that. <laughs> they probably made it wrong. But that, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll. She I'll, pointed at the say, picture. He uh, didn't understand what was going on. <laughs> I will say that, like, it doesn't matter unless if the person is funny, right? But um, here's a thing I hate the most of all. Is uh, Mike and channel? Ryan on Cinemassacre? Oh, oh my God! God fucking you're right. yes, I hate it. It's 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 the same principle as bringing your girlfriend on because <laughs> it's like because you know not all girlfriends are like perfect for YouTube. If you're a YouTuber, you just you don't look for people who are good on camera. If you're a YouTuber, that's just not exactly how it works, really. So it's, you know if if you have your girlfriend on, it's because you're there. They got to be in this spotlight. Because they fucked someone, and yeah. basically it's the same thing with Mike and Ryan. This guy, I, I don't say, I'm not saying he's fucked. Anybody, I think Ryan I did know. fuck Mike. <laughs> but um, this Ryan guy is so boring, and Mike is not as funny as James. Right. Yeah, that's and the thing. They have Hippo, a show, and that... they keep doing it over and over again. Why is he yeah. there killing? Because Mike, Mike starts off as the like sort of unfunny sidekick to James, and then we make him the main guy, and then give him an even unfunnier sidekick. It's like it's two degrees of unfunny sidekick that's being yeah. forced upon us. Now. Yeah, well, because like, like you know, I haven't, 
I unsubbed Cinemassacre. I was, like, phasing in and out of being subbed to Cinemassacre for a couple of years, like, around 2013 or so. But I've officially unsubbed it and stayed unsubbed. It's just, like, I'll, I'll watch the AVGN episodes when I feel like it. Maybe I'll watch a couple other James-centric videos when I feel like it, right? But because I'm not subbed, I don't feel the pressure to get back to it. Really what it is, is the whole Cinemassacre wagon just couldn't... Uh, keep its real... It just kind of got fucked in the modern YouTube era of constant uploads because James just doesn't do constant uploads. And he needed to, like, uh, get some other, like, shitty people to attach onto himself to, like, to, like, pump out more content, you know? Like, he sort of treated, uh, the, the Monster Madness, where he did, you know, one review every day for all of October, which he came up with in 2007. He sort of treated that like a big special thing that he literally said takes all year to work on. So, for him, doing consistent content even if it's short videos doesn't work so that's what has fucked his channel right and it first started around 2012 when he first went off to film the AVGN movie and he sort of gave the channel keys over to Mike during that time and Mike made some of his own videos and this was when Mike finally kind of stepped into the spotlight really up to that point all Mike had done was play like special characters in certain AVGN episodes in which he was really funny and he also drew AVGN title cards so like he was like this guy in the background behind the curtain who had helped a lot but in the modern YouTube age it's like get as many faces on as many videos on as many days the calendar with as much runtime as possible so James has exhausted all of the fucking people he knows um yeah and yeah it sucks I I never it's, I've, it's the I've equivalent never of... watched the Ryan videos because as soon as I look at them I'm like well this guy's obviously never gonna say anything interesting ever <laughs> yeah, like whenever I accidentally click on one, like I'm like, oh wait, that's Ryan. Immediately, you know, <laughs> backspace. Like I, I, I have never seen a single sec. I mean, I've probably seen one video to see. Wait, this is like where I discovered that I hate this idea. Right. And ever since then, it's right. Like and like, disgusting. and like, honestly, it's, it's the equivalent of having like yeah. Game Grumps be exclusively Barry and some other guy. Yeah. That hey, never heard of. Well, Barry's like, funny. Here's the thing, right? I think. I'm trying to think of, like, the least funny Game Grumps. If it was, and like, guess... Susie and Holly only, I wouldn't want to watch it. Yeah, Here, yeah, here's the thing, sure. right? Is, the, the, is like, good. The, I think the worst thing, and, I, and I'm going to talk about out, out of my ass at least slightly, because I'm, like, seven episodes of AVG and behind, which is to say, like, a year or two behind. But, like, I honestly feel <laughs> as though... Uh, all that extra content di like dilutes the AVGN series in a number of ways. First of all, the set, right? Originally, the a the nerd room felt like uh, an area in a show. It felt like this sort of magical property that was put together through the force of storytelling, because that's how it was presented. Yeah. But once it's used for like everyday vlogs and all sorts of let's plays and other things, it just feels like this yeah, guy's breaks... room. It breaks down the barrier. Right. It, it, it makes it less of a character. It's right, like, yeah. oh no, this is pretty much all just really yeah. me oh, just, just fucking shooting around in, in my room, room. After all. Right. Know? Well, I mean, the, they don't shoot in that room really that much. Like, they've done okay, a couple. Okay, well. Uh, they've done a few Let's Plays. And, but Mike and Ryan is usually just in a white okay. room. Okay. Well, I remember originally are. it wasn't maybe like in, that. Maybe in Ryan's house. But, like, also, like, James, like, the, the nerd as a character, like, the whole fucking character thing does not work anymore. I mean, it still works on AVG, yeah. just not as well. Because everyone knows... Be the because you see him being himself so much. Right, you see, yeah. Like, like for example, imagine if Mr. B-Tongue did shitloads of vlogs and Let's Plays. His whole, like, persona that he puts on in his actual videos that he makes every like couple of months or handful of once or twice a year wouldn't work as well because you know this guy way too well like like you know the Mr. Plinkett series has to really bend over backwards to keep like uh, building up the illusion of the character by like being really extensively written having a totally different voice from what Staclasa actually sounds like and shit you know what I mean like, they have to, like, really um, do so much to keep justifying the character, and it works fine. But with James versus the nerd, there's not that much difference. It's more like the nerd is just sort of certain cartoony voices James naturally does just all the time rather mm -hmm. than some of the time and it's just like he's wearing a white shirt instead of any random dark shirt right i think actually james yeah. probably goes out of his way to wear dark shirts to make himself not look like the nerd otherwise he looks the same, exact fucking same and like the whole format is just pointless you know you see people like like digi and a lot of us who originally just made like regular sized videos before the whole modern youtube era kind of got like offici officiated uh, and they would just do regular videos and the occasional podcast. But once Digi started doing vlogs and Let's Plays constantly, he changed the nature of his main channel content to reflect the fact that, like, the way that you absorb his 
narrative is different now and like the abgn format is just kind of dated for that reason and like i you know there's a part of me that wants to say well james would be able to keep his head above water and make plenty of money without falling in line with the modern youtube format just by doing a patreon but he's got a wife and kid and probably still debt to deal with after that movie so you know i, I get it but fuck i think abgn should start wearing a hat because seeing the nerd balding is dis dis discerning to me. Oh, I want to see it's, that happen. He it hurts he's, me. He's project. I, I, I mean, like for example, the, there have been little tiny hints or like jokes rather of the idea of that the nerd show is going to be around for a long fucking time and James is going to get really old. Like like one time he pulls off some games. It's off It's already of, happened. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there's one time where he's pulling games off a shelf to talk about a certain company and they're like, now this company also made this game called Raid 2020. Maybe I'll review that game in the year 2020. At the time, I <laughs> laughed. Right now, I'm like, oh, he's really going to do that. You know, his fans aren't going to let him forget that shit. He actually. Who, who would have ever thought he'd still be going right, back in right. the Right, this was back you know? when we didn't realize that YouTubers just never fucking die. They never stop. Like, on, like, like, on rare <laughs> yeah. occasions, they'll stop. This is most like of a show. Stay forever. It right. doesn't end. Right. Because it it's just a guy. Because it's just a guy in his basement. And yeah. now we can see. We can see through the veil. Right. It's been pulled, James it's actually been said aside. years ago that he's like, I'm never going to stop doing AVGN, even if it's only one a year. Because so, it means so much to me. And I'm like, I like that, because I, I want the show to continue forever. But, like, he even has, like, a, a Christmas special episode from 2007 where he, like, he goes through the fucking Christmas carol so he sees his future self. And it's, like, him with, like, a white wig and a big white beard reviewing the Wii. And he's like, <laughs> remember the Nintendo Wii? Yeah, that's what they called it. <laughs> and so he, like, plays Boogie and, like, uh, like um, um, Monkey Ball. And I'm like, dude, if, if James gets to be in, like, his fucking 60s and he decides, like, you know what? I'm going to actually be that version of the character. I'm going to grow a beard and be like a really fucking old nerd, you know? Yeah. I I think he'll I'd still watch he it. He will have, I don't think it's a, and like look, the show is still good. The show's not a wash. He actually does update the character like like he updates the way the character like feels. Like the the style of anger that he portrays in the videos has evolved tons of times. So the show is going to last forever. It's never going to get shit IMHO. It's just the modern format that he has to spit himself <laughs> through is just kind of unfortunate. That's that's the real worst thing ever. Is is YouTube as a platform just becoming more sterile and cookie cutter and oh. not allowing flexibility for anything. I've I've fucking I've fucking got it. I've got something that I hate. It's another broad category. And this is way fucking broad. This is like literally everyone is guilty of this in some way. Oh no. And it's creators whose art is basically just about themselves or about their art. Yep, everyone. Like, oh. Yeah. Yeah, like people eat that shit up. Like like when a like when a story gets gets like when a piece of work gets real cheeky and like breaks the fourth wall and ooh references this so this thing or says something that only the fan base would get as a little nod. People eat that shit up. But like overuse like, go go overboard in that shit even a little bit and it's like what the fuck am I watching? Like this this thing that I'm consuming is just jerking itself off about how important it is. And why do I even bother? You know? And when someone like yeah, like, 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 drama channels like Grade A, Under A, or, like, uh, I don't know, the, the fucking so many people. Like, like they're, they make YouTube videos, like, vloggers. They're making YouTube videos about the fact that they make YouTube videos. That's yep. the story that I'm watching. And it's like, oh, my fucking God. Why <laughs> the fuck do we oh, need ben, this? Ben, you have no fucking idea. I have that, I have that, like, epiphany, like, weekly, if not daily, of, like, because sometimes, it, <laughs> sometimes it's true. Why do you need to epiphany. have it more than once? You just need to have it once, and yeah, then you've had just it. Just a thought. I don't know what the word is. It uh, doesn't go that, anywhere. That, 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 that moment of morbid... Uh, nihilism, I guess, because it's like I, I often am triggered by it by something like something that's very obvious, like a lot of rap, which is just like I'm a rapper and I'm rapping, and people think about this about my rap, and this is what their reaction to my rap is, and this is my yeah. response to that reaction. It's like, damn, like the whole point of rap is hey, to talk about Digi the rap. Hey, that song is really good. Yeah, I know, right? I don't know. There's there's a place there's a place oh, for yeah. like meta commentary in art, but like when when I feel like what someone does is just comment on themselves it's like yeah. fuck this guy yeah, yeah yeah so like so fucking so I, I think about that but then i think well ultimately everything you tell even if it's a fictional story it's just things you're thinking about yourself it's just it's just all you and your ideas that just represents you but then like 
deceptively woven into a narrative and ultimately everything's like that and then i think well literally yeah. everything not just art but like you know people selling hot dogs like oh, they're just there to perpetuate the selling of hot dogs walking down the street you're just there to get somewhere <laughs> I, I, <yeah>. everything <laughs> everything doesn't have a, have a point like everything is like um sort of goes into my general philosophy of no matter what life you're living you're always thinking you're not really living the life of living you know like you're not really really living a real life it's like if you decide to live your life one way then all you can think about is how you're not living all these other ways that you could be living and and representing all these other mm -hmm. things that you could be representing and ultimately there is no point and ultimately everything is basically life is a game of hot potato where you go from one vice to another vice to another thing you have to do and until you're dead, right? And that's like the whole point of life. So the whole point of a YouTube video is just to like, is to just justify itself and then you're watching the video and then that's the point. And then you go to buy a burger and like the whole point of the burger is just to get a burger. The burger doesn't enhance your life in any way. But then like you can get money and the money doesn't enhance your life because you buy things that don't enhance your, nothing, nothing, but nothing matters. There you go. So basically you can go from complaining about meta commentary going, it immediately escalated to absolute nihilism pretty quickly. So that's kind of why I try sure. to avoid thinking that way, but it's kind of hard. You know, but my but my Devu, two points I, are. Devu, I do agree that money does not improve your life, and I'll take that burden off your hands if you want to just send well. it to me, so you don't have to worry <laughs> about it anymore. But but I, my two points are related because when when I see someone like a vlogger who whose whole deal is they just talk about themselves and their life is them making vlogs and it's a big incestuous circle jerk. Uh, I see someone like that, and then I see someone getting super popular for doing that and getting tons of money on Patreon. And I'm like, what are these people seeing in this? What are they paying for? What is do that? They what think Casey is the Neistat was, or was that something else? I didn't more watch it. more or less. I don't really know anything about him, but I can like um, the back when Pokemon Go was a thing. Hippo, you know about the trainer tips guy. Oh, I started yeah. watching this vlogger who's the trainer tips guy because he would talk about the game, and I was interested in the game at the time. And the dude blew up. And he just fucking vlogs now and makes daily videos about his life playing Pokemon Go. And people Lol. fucking eat it yeah. up. And I'm like, geez, like, just like Jim Sterling. Like, I like this guy. Like, I like what he's saying. I don't understand how it fucking can blow up like this. I don't think he deserves this much success from something so, you know, fucking, fucking, uh, not fucking basic. God I, damn. It's, it's, I mean, with trainer tips, it was really just... He was the he when it when it came to actually explaining the mechanics of the game and what's you know the updates and everything he was like the best YouTube channel for that yeah uh, but but then he did like like there were less updates there was less stuff going on and he just sort of started vlogging and then vlogs became so much of like the part of the video but it, it makes me and mad people because got invested like, in his life because he's uh, I don't know he's got loads of charizards he's just I mean he's he plays the game a lot but he's just regurgitating stuff that like people are posting on the on the on the subreddits he's just regurgitating info right. that people on the subreddits well, are posting I, there. I know what the uh, like, what is the point I know the reasoning for I this. think I, well I think what it is 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 that like people who watch YouTube generally when it's like a vlog or a let's play, they want to feel the company of another yeah, human being. Yeah, that's exactly being. what I was about to say, yeah. They I, want to pretend I, I, I understand. Person. Like, like I'm saying all this, I'm saying all this with, with, with the not, like, I do understand the appeal because, like, I was watching the video, so I get liking it. <laughs> But then the fact that like when it then it gets really popular and I'm like, oh, fuck this. You know, this is this is what I'm this is the phenomenon I'm describing in action. You're seeing it right now. Someone whose content I like, then I see it successful. I'm like, no, I don't like it anymore. Fuck you, buddy. Well, well, ben, let me you ask know, you. That's just called being a hipster. Yeah. Ben, let me ask you a question just to gauge which which vlogs are OK and which ones aren't. OK, so, <laughs> sure. A, a vlog about going to a water park. Yay or nay? Um, dep if it, it only if it makes less money. Than the trip costs. Well, if it, it, if it, turns it definitely a... did. So that's okay, all good. I needed to know. <laughs> if, it, if it doesn't turn a profit, then I'm okay with it. I think it put him in debt. <laughs> good, good, good. That's true art. Uh, I only like water park vlogs when the person at the water park eats a whole bar of chocolate before. <laughs> did he do that in the video? I think he did. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was his breakfast. Whole... You're right. <laughs> Oh this, this mystery person. This I like it when their thumbnail person. is them with their shirt off making like a weird gesture towards a water slide. Oh, <laughs> That's yeah. the only time it's yeah. okay. Oh dear. <laughs> but we'll Did you guys know that it. that episode of PCP has way less views than any other one? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, no. oh, what a shame. <laughs> Dude, like, what a shame. What you were talking about, like it's we're entering a we're entering the fucking Wally society where you know everyone is just sort of in chairs just 
doing nothing. Like, that's, that's the world we're going to, where people just plug themselves into YouTube forever, and all we need now is just 3D printers to make food. And, and it will be done. This is why this is why I think ISIS isn't such yeah. a bad idea. I think, <laughs> I think the constant threat of being killed and beheaded uh, for no reason really, is, really makes is, you appreciate is stuff that life. we really need. Yeah. Yeah, we really need some some strife in our lives if we're gonna. It's do just anything. this big difference. Is, I think fundamental difference between the way that. I, especially when YouTube was brand new, was like getting engaging with YouTube the way it was originally engaged with the way it is versus the way it is now. And especially by like just, you know, kids who are discovering it, you know, as it's already in this this modern era of like YouTube is this thing you throw on and just endlessly swim in forever, you know? And for me, you know, for people when back when YouTube was new and limited, didn't have that many videos, none of the videos were that good. It was like going to like a weird store, to like a trinket shop, to think, "Ooh, what am I gonna, what am I gonna pick out?" It was sort of like going to the movies and like, "What movie am I gonna see? Like, what YouTube video well, am I gonna it was watch?" It's like going to Blockbuster. Yeah, it was like going to Blockbuster and picking out videos based on the cover. Right, but now it's like just you just throw something on, you know, and that's literally how you get popular. You got to get popular by like engaging the "I'll throw something on" audience and not the, ooh, what video am I going to watch audience, you know? And I think it's shit, and it didn't have to be that way. Because, you know, like my fucking, you know, uh, uh, the invisible hand of the market logic goes, well, YouTube optimized itself for what would, you know, make, you know, get the most eyes glued to the most screens and rake in the most cash. And I think that eventually, once social media has hit, like, a fucking uh, uh, event horizon where everything just spills over and it hits this, like, it, the, the bubble bursts, you're going to see the the rise of, like, rebellious social medias that really focused on, like, culling down the quantity and really ramping up the quality. And, like, there'll, there'll finally be real competition for YouTube, assuming that this fucking adpocalypse reaches critical mass, right? And, like, people will, will pursue these other places, these other YouTube alternatives as like a fucking identity statement and like the algorithms of those websites will be all about about quality over quantity and and yeah that that i feel is the only thing that's going to stop the critical mass of longer 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 pointless or pointless or pointless or vlogs about everyone everything all the time is outright rebellion outright like the human nature's desire to say fuck you to the establishment so we just gotta wait for this whole vlog shit oh, to yeah. get established enough. i believe in that I I think oh the, I I actually, hope you're right actually, to me. That sounds actually, like a, a miracle waiting to happen. It to it me. does it. I mean that does yeah. It's a miracle because I feel like because I've seen a, a talk by a guy. It wasn't a TED talk, so don't worry. <laughs> Let me allay your um, fears right now. This was no <laughs> TED talk, viewer. Yeah, um, he was explaining that the possibility is there that in the future privacy is not going to be a thing that people grow up knowing what it no, is. I, I, yeah, because I agree. Technology, technology is going to to turn all this sort of YouTubey, uh, just mindless entertainment into you know technology like phones and chips you put in your head that stream your whole life and experiences across the internet Evolve. for everyone to see and everybody else is also doing that and it's just a big sea of everybody knows everything yeah, about see, we're already else. in we're already entering this era with say you know elected officials where they're constantly having scandals about things that uh, politicians have always done in every administration every country ever it's just that they never got caught because we didn't have camera phones back then we didn't right. have guerrilla investigators and like half the time I mean I think like half the shit that people got that, 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 that put Trump into the hottest of waters was like some random thing he said one time at some point 20 years ago that there was a mic in front of and someone uploaded it right right? and eventually you know cut to 40 years from now or even 30 years from now when like millennials start running for office we're gonna have a place where like everyone who wants to be a a public official is everyone's so fucked like it's gonna be like you tweeted this one thing when you were 15 right well i think it's gonna hit the n-word and you're, you're, you're fucked well, well, you guys are fucked. No, no. What it's going <laughs> to be all said the is it's going to be a goddamn critical mass of like, well, now everyone is exposed on the internet. Everyone is bad. We now know everyone's dirty laundry. So now you have to select your vote based on entirely different parameters. And then people will just stop giving a shit about all those things because everyone will know. Who... I don't know if I have enough faith in humanity to believe that. It'll become a question not of who's got the least dirty laundry, but whose dirty laundry's smell is the least unpleasant. I don't know, because the example you used was Trump, and that was some dirty-ass laundry, and then he won anyway, so maybe we'll just elect people for saying the N-word all the time. But by the way, uh, 
my my biggest creator that I hate is Donald Trump for <laughs> the, him cre- creating for creating the United no, 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 States no. of America. No, yeah. no, no, creating no, he's, freedom. He's creating he, because he's creating <laughs> plans to destroy ISIS, and we all know we need <laughs> ISIS. <laughs> yeah, to appreciate True. life. We need ISIS to stop Wally from happening. Yeah. Donald, ready for questions? Do- Donald Trump wants to fix all our problems, and I here to say yeah. no. We need like, our I problems. Feel like, I feel like we're, we've been going for an hour. Does anybody else have any like last minute like? I think so. I have a couple hate. of ones, a little quick like tiny ones. Couple. Just one. Just oh, one. God. Just just fucking one. Can we do a third episode? Cr- I only have one. Which okay, is Cinema Sins, obviously, see. right? And oh yeah, fuck Cinema. Yeah, and like yeah. I, that's that's oh, my, my opinion. Yeah, of, goes without my, saying. My opinion worst, of Cinema Sins have, has always been like, well, obviously they just slap these videos together. What the fuck ever? It's mildly amusing sometimes if I care about the movie, whatever. But then a f- no, but it's fucking nonsense. Yeah, well then a, a friend of mine <laughs> recommended me these videos called like Cinema Sins Sins. I don't remember what they're called, but there's this guy who like rebuts Cinema Sins with like just yeah, going I've down. Seen one of them. He, he's done like only five of them, which is all you really need to be convinced most of them are of the marvel movies reviews like uh yeah i watched the civil war one right right where this guy rebutted their uh, videos yeah he made really good yeah so like at first i was kind of naysaying this guy because the way he made his case especially in his first one against them sounded just like a stupid fucking comment of like oh cinema sins is misleading the audience misinforming them about the movies (laughs) it's it's, it's just it's so inaccurate the videos are inaccurate and it's just blah and like he had a really respectful tone i was like under tailoring him up there for comedic effect but it was just i was imagining the transcript of this guy's video pissing me off especially if i liked cinema sins (laughs) or if it was like a video that I made, right? But I have to admit, oh. <laughs> this is an instance where the amount of actually being factually wrong reaches a critical mass of, okay, yeah, your videos suck, right? Because like commenters love to do that. Oh, you got this point wrong. You got that point wrong. Therefore, you're invalid. And it's like, fuck you. But like this, like he, this guy over the course of several videos, especially the one on the Marvel movies, convinced me that cinema sins are shitty not just at like making videos or analyzing them but even watching movies and paying adequate attention i am convinced that cinema sins yeah. are not just doing cynical youtube clickbait you know shit to like get the views but are also just outright lazy in general right because i remember at least last time i checked cinema sins uploads once every 3 days right that I, but and yet I think he does two movies a week like Tuesday yeah something like that right day. let's just say once every three days right and like this guy convinced me that they only watch the movies once maybe twice and are probably taking down notes as they're going through without pausing by the sheer level of like fucking up that their points have but and I, I explained to my friend yeah three days is a lot but three days is enough time to watch the movie raw not taking down any notes take down some notes after watching it watch the movie again taking down notes while you watch it and then watch the movie a third time to make sure you didn't fuck anything up right you can do all that in one day if it's a full-time job second day edit the video make the whole fucking video and then have your lunch break because it should only take like three hours tops right then you can take the rest of the day and the whole third day just doing whatever right so clearly shit channel and it's like it's just one channel that has been objectively proven as shit by another channel (laughs) extensively analyzing them so uh yeah fuck cinema sense i have a video game where you beat them up it's it it's it's really it's really like um, telling when you when you realize, you know, most people don't have a very good work ethic and they still manage to get videos out so quickly because they're they're just not they're they're not using their brain that much. Yeah. It's just it it, it annoys thing me I... when I when I when I feel like I have to work a lot harder than other people to get things out faster and I realize that they're not working hard themselves. Yeah, so it's guys, just, like, if you want to hand at work. If you guys want to beat the shit out of Cinema Sins, I have a flash game for it. Just Google Footwear Man <laughs> beats up Cinema Sins. I, I made it a long time ago just at Jesse's request. So uh there you go. The other thing I hate about Cinema Sins is that they've spawned so many imitators. Oh god. It's just oh, disgusting. That, no, if you want a Oh, do you remember the Brony? Oh, there's, oh, there's yeah. multiple Brony ones. Or at least there Brony were. Sins? Right. Cinemare oh, Sins. Yeah. Yeah. Cinemare. Yeah. No! Oh my God. Dude, dude, no. <laughs> if you want objective fucking proof that your video style is easy, there is one channel I saw that's like literally an 11-year-old girl doing it for every episode of Sonic oh. Boom. <laughs> it's great. Oh, dear. Oh, yeah. yeah. I actually like the idea. Oh, it's that adorable. <laughs> The point stands, though. It's it's a very easy formula to ape. But yeah, that's... Uh, the only... I mean, 
that was kind of long for a lightning round thing. The thing I was just going to say, two things off the bat that I always hated that I don't even pay attention to much anymore. Uh, the channels where it's just like a girl with big tits that are like being pushed up with a bra just staring at the camera and that's it. And they get a million views and get tons of money. I hate them. They're oh, stupid. Oh, yeah, like Ben well, and Jackie's college fun. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, that's pretty exactly much, that's pretty the much same what thing. we do over there. <laughs> hate that hate ben clearly um <laughs> I, I haven't watched it yet but if that's what it is then, oh, then you're on you my have to reveal that. the fuck up <laughs> then uh the other thing is just reaction channels in general they're all terrible uh, like ben and jackie's college fund yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> we're pretty yeah we're, we're pretty much guilty of everything that's been described today uh um yeah that's all i got uh, anybody else have any closing remarks quickly before we go to questions because we're, no. we're, we're pushing an hour here. Uh, I don't like uh, people who do Twitch and uh, are really boring. Boo. And they get hundreds hundreds of billions of uh, currency. Some currency. By, by I, people. Do, I don't like understand. They, they, every five seconds is like, oh, uh, some guy gave you a hundred bucks. Well, yeah, thanks. I'm just going to keep playing yeah, this Twitch game. is a platform yeah. I don't like. like. There's nothing on Twitch I enjoy. It's all bad, especially when I don't, you make I, tons of money. I don't understand the drive to watch to watch someone play like Hearthstone or League of Legends or something and be like, yeah. I, I just I, I just, just don't get the idea of watching video games. I've tried. I've really tried to get into it. And like, if you do, good on you. But I just I don't get it. I'm just I, when I watch because I only want to watch people playing games that I I like or I want to play. And the whole time, I'm just like I. I kind of want to just play the game now, and then I just turn it off and I'll go play the game. So yeah, I don't I don't really get it. I mean, I, everything has its audience and market, blah blah blah. But yeah, not my thing. Okay, are we going to questions? All right, are we good. Yep, let's go. Here's right. a question from the PCP Patron Lounge. If you want to get to this exclusive lounge, while where we all hang out and chat with you fucking sheeple. Go over to the PCP Patreon and throw in a buck. You'll get access. You can ask us these questions. You can. I think. Uh, I think Digi posted pictures of his phimosis cock in here the other day. So if you want to oh, get good. in on that, go ahead. <laughs> Does that count as false advertising if I just like give out a blatant lie and then say give us money? Uh, um, <laughs> no. Yes, it's, but we it, encourage it, no because that. it's true. Because it's. <laughs> it, I can see them right Somebody now. Somebody go post it quick. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta go convince yeah. him. Oh, God. Uh, Okay, here's a question from Cucked by the Laws of Aerodynamics who wants to know, if you could get any movie sequel made, what would it be? Oh, God. <sighs> um, uh, I don't even uh, like movies. The Brave Little Toaster 4. Oh, shit. I love Brave Little Toaster, even though the, the two and three were made by oh! Disney and they weren't as good as the first one. N I, I, wanna, I want more toaster. No, I I actually have a great answer to this. Um, Okay, um... I don't know if, if anyone's ever heard of uh, uh, fucking Rhapsody Street Kids Believe in Santa is a, a oh. an abominable Christmas special. Yeah, we reviewed it on the College Fund, yep. and it it was supposed to have a sequel. Like the end of it ends with like "We'll be back for Easter," but it was so bad and and, and was received so terribly that it never got made. And there's nothing I would rather see in this world than Rhapsody Street Kids Two Easter Easter Feaster or whatever. <laughs> Yeah, Fantastic. so that's my pick. I'm going to cheat because it's what I do. And instead of a sequel, I want a prequel because I want to see more movies in the Inception universe. But I don't want to see a sequel because that'll ruin the ambiguous ending of the first one. But I want to see more adventures of, you know, Leo and friends going into people's dreams and fucking around. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Oh, Leo. Uh, young Leo meets young Sheldon. Yeah. Oh. I, I oh, want him geez. to the incept movie. young Sheldon to convince him to be an atheist. <laughs> It's where he learned his his, his inception. Uh, we, you magic. find out that young, <laughs> he, that's what it was. young he Sheldon invented the tech. into his brain. Oh, young, the young Sheldon oh, invented no. the dream the dream dive technology. Oh my god! By accident. Well, we did it. We we came up with the perfect movie. <laughs> <laughs> honey, honey, I incepted the Zinga. <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> young Get Sheldon's on it, also Hollywood. married. <laughs> uh, Tom, what movie do you want to see? The Suicide Diaries 2? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't oh. know. I, nothing that is too close to home. Yeah, it's totally. <laughs> That's I, I'm going to make it myself. Just you wait. One of these days. <laughs> um, oh, God. I, nothing. Nothing's really springing to mind, to be totally honest. Um, 
Yeah, I'm. I'm. I, there's no nine sequel. eleven two. Oh, oh, <laughs> that's coming too at the rate we're going. Let's be real. <laughs> what the Trump Tower? <sighs> Maybe that'd be pretty. Ooh. Oh Ooh. yeah, that would not be surprised. Man, imagine just imagine. Not saying I want it to happen. <laughs> just saying it'd oh, be yeah, kind of yeah, cool, don't that. you think? Cool. <laughs> I mean, maybe a pretty nice tower would be a shame if something were to happen. What a twist. (laughs) (laughs) Who is saying that? (laughs) Who's making Uh, the veiled threat to Trump? (laughs) Uh, ISIS probably. That's how they said it? But like I said, we need, we need ISIS. For the greater good, to make sure we don't don't all end up as Wally, we're going to blow up Trump Tower. Good on you, ISIS. The heroes we deserve. (laughs) They did it. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, well, uh, great question, uh, Monkey. Let's move on to the next one, I guess. <laughs> Unless Davu had an answer. Oh uh, yeah, I was thinking about it because I was thinking, thinking of every movie I like, and like I don't want sequels to any of them. You know, I'm down on the whole sequels, remakes, reboots, re everything. Is that anyone is? Your name you know, too. Not... What was their name? Lol. <laughs> but no. Um. So I was thinking. Well, you know, I don't like the idea in general. So how can I turn it? How can I spin it into a win? Right. And I had the idea a while ago that like Hollywood should just re everything all at once in one giant thing and then like kill everyone so i like how can you okay. do that while well, it also being a, the ultimate showdown revengeance and just make it like all oh the actual God. fucking people not just flat shitty flash animations full score by lemon demon <laughs> of course uh, who has lately gotten really good at combining yeah. fucking music together neil Cesariga, that guy so like just yeah he just comes been good at that for a while yeah he fucking he fucking like smashes every fucking movie soundtrack into one we're using his incredible skills and like all the actors are brought back for a final movie and they all get slaughtered and there we go we can finally have new ips because i'm as big on we need new ips as anybody because ip every day fantastic (laughs) um all right anybody else have a question i'm looking through the chat most of them Uh well, uh, here's I'm here's one the Twitter. from I don't know. here's one from oh, yeah. at you underscore flame. Why does Digi insist on shaking his gross phimosis cock? Even people with regular foreskin have to wipe their dig. <laughs> Find out on the PCP Patreon where yeah. Digi posted several photos, and this is not false advertising. <laughs> I think it's just because um, there's another question in there about, like, ha- has having girlfriends improved our hygiene? And I have to imagine Digi's toilet is no longer a giant piss-stained mess, but I don't know. I have not seen images yeah. of that. Can uh, anybody confirm? I, I have not been there. No, hmm. I have not. Who Picture, knows? I can answer the question, the, On the Procrastinator's fan chat. <laughs> uh, not false advertising Yeah, to be able to hear you so, answer Yes, but not directly so. So, like, I actually do take showers almost every day now, but, like, I mean, my girlfriend does not. But, like, what it is is that just, like, you know, having a fucking relationship and sex just sort of balances out my fucking brain, and I can make better decisions for myself. Like, oh, hey, if I take a shower, I will immediately, like, get that 15 minutes of time back by, like, how much faster I'm going to work for the next couple hours because I'm going to feel so fucking clean. I'm going to feel awesome so yes indirectly but it's i ha i still do and have always had better hygiene than uh my partner in question (laughs) (laughs) way to throw her under the bus sorry sitting next to you (laughs) well there you go all right whose girlfriend is i i guess is disgusting she just takes a shower every other day it's normal oh yeah that's fine what about you, Ben? Uh, marginally, marginally. Uh, <laughs> Just not his beard. I, I, th- I, th- I probably brush my teeth a little more often nowadays. You know, f- to be polite. Uh, so <laughs> that's pretty good. But everything else is pretty much the same. Uh, yep. That's my answer. Do we Next have any question? other Twitter questions today? I want more um, questions. Leo J. Larkin asks, is there a literary device that makes you immediately stop caring about a story? Personally, chosen one slash prophecy plot Ooh, kills good it question. for me. Hmm. That, that's my um, big one for sure. I, I feel it's just so tired and played out that I, I, I'm almost <laughs> like, I almost want someone to t- put a spin on it that makes it interesting again because I feel like everyone who does it does it exactly the same. Hmm. 
I I did I did mention earlier the bit about like like breaking the fourth wall. If you break the fourth wall too much, it makes me stop caring. If you break the fourth wall so much that it's like this isn't even a real story anymore. But Ben, yeah. Deadpool likes chimichangas, dude. <laughs> well, that's 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 in canon. Okay, that's, well that, to answer fine. the question, I mean my, the first thing that springs to mind it mind is like uh when the narrative device of that like lets me know immediately that there's gonna be a big dramatic people getting mad at each other scene over a misunderstanding or the liar revealed. Uh, but like I, took I thought that. I was really unique with that whole point about the liar revealed until Nostalgia Critic coined the term and started talking about it a lot. And so that's that that whole crusade, I guess, is basically covered. Like, we're learning our lesson from that fucking one, hopefully. But to go really, really broad, like, the biggest connecting fiber between my disengagement with most stories, but mostly most movies, is when the goal isn't clear. When, like, the point or, like, the objective or, like, how the character's gonna go about their objective isn't clear. Regardless of whether or not it's an action movie, like, a gotta save the president, or a romance movie, like, I gotta get that girl to like me, you know, it's just whenever the, the, uh, the, the, it's just the movie is not telling me exactly what the point or what the goal is, I just get so fucking confused, and it's such a common thing with, like, Hollywood movies, like, I remember Star Wars Episode Seven having this, where it's like, okay, we kind of have to go here, but we kind of have to go there, but we're kind of gonna do this, but we're, we're kind of not... I die. I remember the Hobbit movies having the yeah. same problem. I couldn't quite like get like why everyone is doing the thing that you're doing. Right. I'm done. You need you need to establish your stakes like very clearly because that's like the linchpin of getting people to actually give a fuck. Right. So if you don't do that, the whole everything else just doesn't feel like it has any context. Um, I also agree that like I think you basically just said this. But I'm just going to reiterate it: is that any any fake character like protagonist versus protagonist conflict that you know is going to be solved. It just feels like I'm. I, I instantly get like really stressed out because I'm like, this whole conflict is completely pointless. It's not going to affect anything. Like they're yeah. not going to keep fighting forever. Like so, just can we just like if I'm I have a book like that, I'll just yeah. flip through the pages and skim it until it gets over with. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, I have I a wanna... VH. I have a VHS tape that's like paused, that's like stuck right before that scene happens. The Rocketeer, right? I watched it a handful of years ago, or I almost did. But then like I knew that basically I could tell based on like everything, red flags were, were blaring out of the screen up my ass. Like there's gonna be a scene where the guy conf like meets the girlfriend and she's mad at him and she's probably gonna slap him and a little bit of like Rocketeer juice is gonna come out of his rocket ass or something. I just know it, right? And like like based on what how the scene was being framed, he was like he got off his rocket, he's walking into a building where the girlfriend is and I know all the plot beats that are happening so I'm like yeah there's gonna be a scene where she's mad at him and he's at his lowest point and I was so mad preemptively I was so preemptively mad knowing it was gonna happen <laughs> and bring down my entire opinion of the otherwise perfectly okay movie that I was watching so I, I paused the movie stopped it took out the tape and I have not gotten back to it for years and to this day it stays exactly <laughs> at that point and I'm just ready ready oh, with geez. a fucking shotgun <laughs> Everybody yeah, likes I, to suck I, the dick of the new It movie, but even that, like, for no reason, the kids all stop being friends, and then, like, not even two minutes later, it's resolved. Like, fuck. why do they shoehorn it into every fucking movie? It's so yeah. unnecessary I mean, if you're gonna do and it, I'd uninteresting. Much, I'd much rather they do it that way, where it's, like, something, it's just done. Just don't do it at all! I agree, but if you're going to, do it quickly. But why? I hate, I, what does it fucking add? I don't, I don't know. It's very, it's totally I mean, totally for me, stupid. it's not even the, for me, I don't even get as mad about like the forcedness of it as the I can't believe the characters would act I, I guess it's related to the forcedness but it's always stupidity on the part of the main character right like I remember right. hearing that there's like what's that one movie about the fucking lizard iguana guy who can camouflage and therefore he lies and like that has a liar revealed scene in it I haven't seen it but Nostalgia Critic said that it's an example of a movie that works because Is that Rango? Yeah Rango um I won't say like Django Unchained, but that's not the right movie. So anyway, he was saying that like that movie it works because the movie is fucking about that. It's like a movie about a character whose like thing is that he's deceptive and he has to learn his lesson about it. And I'm like, there you go, right? I hate it when it's like a character who I'm supposed to like relate to or has any sort of arrangement of personality things or things going on with them, and they always somehow find themselves in a place where they're incentivized to lie about themselves, and they always go about lying about themselves in the same fucking way or they fail to communicate in a certain way for me i never fucking put up with people misunderstanding me i'm gonna 
push, I'm gonna put them down in the seat, get out the fucking whiteboard if I have to, and visualize, like, a fucking chalkboard YouTube video why they're wrong and misunderstanding something, to the point that they're exhausted <laughs> and don't give a shit anymore. That's how all of my liar-revealed scenes go, all of my misunderstanding scenes go. It goes with them saying, I don't care anymore, fine, shut the fuck up. So I, I just, I, I'm so <laughs> taken out of it by the fact that, like, when the character gets the misunderstanding happening, they just sort of sit there and, like, sigh and let the girl character slap them in the face. You know, I'm just like, why don't they like, why can't there just be one character? Just beat that woman! Yeah, just one <laughs> character who's like, shut up, no. I remember uh, there's like one movie that's like uh, fucking Shia LaBeouf who, who gets framed for being a terrorist, and he literally says, I would be the stupidest terrorist in the world if I did this, that, and the other. This doesn't make any sense. He actually stands up for himself, and I'm like, fucking. Is that Eagle Eye? Yeah, Eagle Eye. He stands up for himself, and I was so I'm fucking. I'm so good at this, baby. You are, yeah. I was so fucking relieved that he finally like, <laughs> said something for himself. That's the. For me, it's not the forcedness, the obligation, it's as much as this, the character sitting there and taking it up the ass. It, I can't relate to that at all. And, uh, yeah, I hate it. Yeah. It's every episode of Friends. Oh, really? Every I, you know what one. I want? I want a That's movie. I, it, it also ties into, like, oh, we don't believe you. Like, if there's, like, a, a, a supernatural thing happening and, like, the main character does a terrible job explaining it, you know, and so therefore no one believes him. I want to have a thing that has the misunderstanding and the no one believes you thing. And, like, it causes his life to be ruined. But then, like, people finally find out, you know, through the plot that it actually was real all the time. And they, like, have a little celebration. And they all kill themselves. No, no, he kills them. So they have a celebration about <laughs> yes! it. <laughs> right. Yes! Yeah, they have a celebration. I want that movie No, 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 no. Too. Literally, it's like this. It's like, it, it's going to be like, okay, you know, like from Dusk Till Dawn, which has like a horror movie twist halfway through. This is going to be a like, does that, this is going to be like a horror, a horror movie twist that happens in the last scene, right? It's otherwise a normal family movie or some shit with a mysterious R rating, I guess, where like, you know, he like just sort of <laughs> takes it, you know? There's a couple of signs early on and throughout the movie that he might be psychotic, but otherwise he acts like a perfectly normal fucking 80s protagonist, just sort of taking this fucking bullshit from all these people who don't like understand him for no fault of his own and then at the end they have a little party or a little festival they're like yeah we're really sorry about that you know once the plot revealed to us that you were right all along, and then he just like he gets up to make his speech but he pulls out a fucking uzi and just fucking slaughters them and you like see individual <laughs> characters like like the older mom character from some other family who like said a particularly nasty line to him you see him stab her with a fork until her neck borderline comes off but he gives up and moves on to someone else you know that's what i fucking want as a movie well, Devu, you know your life's work is ahead yeah, of you now. Is. You know what you have to do. <laughs> it's time. It'll be it's called time to get Devu, started. the real life story. <laughs> be the change. Be the change. I remember. I remember yeah. it like happens in like Home Alone three, and I'm like uh, yelling at the characters, like, "Don't be nice to him now. You were the fucking. I want you dead. They, you should die. You all should die." And my dad was like, "What? J Jesus, calm down. <laughs> like, I want them dead." <laughs> Wait, you were saying that stuff out loud? Well, I wasn't, in front of your I wasn't family? saying fuck. I was just saying, like, casually, like, oh. I, I hate those characters. They should die. I was just casually saying, I want them to die. <laughs> yeah. them my dad die. was so offended on behalf of my threatening of the murder of these fictional characters. Well, Home Alone 3 is a lively event at the DeVu household. <laughs> yeah. This was like 15 years ago. It's a tr family tradition. Yeah. Oh, I remember. I remember. At Radcon 2, you were telling us all about Home Alone 3. I was? No, yeah, it was, it was in the car. I recorded a vlog of him telling us the details of every. Oh whole yeah, movie. I remember that. Oh my that god, now. did I just confuse a YouTube video with real life? Well, no, because you were there. Crap. You were in the passenger side. Oh, okay. I just got the time mixed up. Well, yeah. never mind. Nope. Listen to me. I'm gonna well. <laughs> kill myself. Oh no. Just like Davu wants. Well, oh. uh, the thing I don't like uh, when stuff happens <laughs> is when a thing tries to be funny. And they don't do it right, and uh, it's not even funny. Bad, and that's all. Are you I have talking to say. about my videos, Hippo? Uh, <laughs> you know, a little bit of column A, little God bit of column B. damn it! <laughs> and with that, hey, we've been the PCP folks. I'm Monkey Jones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're all welcome. Oh, Bye. Bye. <laughs> I guess are we, that's another. Are we done? Are we PCP? done with questions. We're done. All the other questions are gay. Yeah, I sorry. Didn't, if, I didn't sorry look at them, if but they're probably uh, gay. Fuck if your it. gay question didn't get answered, uh, keep keep tweeting. Better uh, luck next pa time. Page, patron us. Keep on rocking the PCP. PCP Don't world. forget, you can listen to this episode and every other episode of the PCP on iTunes and Google Play now because I slaved away. I'm never gonna let that go. It was the hardest yeah. thing of my life. <laughs> um, 
If you want to hear the bonus episodes of the PCB that aren't Ooh. on iTunes or Google Play, go to patreon.com slash the procrastinators. Is that what it is? I remember, remember the URL. There's a link in the description. There's a link in the description. Go there. Five bucks. You get access to all the crazy bonus episodes that are too hot for iTunes. And a uh, dollar gets you into the lounge so you can get your questions fast-tracked. And I'm just going to say right now. Our, our $5,000 PCP Patreon goal is Digi will probably post his Phimosis cock. So let's get it up to 5000 folks. <laughs> I know you can do it. Yup. All, All right. right. Bye. That's the way. Bye. 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 Yeah. 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 Uh. I'm supposed to be working. Two.